I keep waiting to hear him say, take the gun, leave the cannoli, but <laughs> might be lost on some. Um, it's certainly a pleasure to be here. Thank you to all of you guys who are here this morning. Hope you get an extra special blessing out of uh, what the Lord has for us. I'd like for you guys to think about, you know, the end of the year is always a time of reflection. Uh, we obviously always hear about New Year's resolutions and things like that. And typically, New Year's resolutions center around what? Feel free to speak. It's, a, it's just a Sunday school class. What do New Year's resolutions normally settle around? What's that? Improving. improving yourself. And when we think of improving ourselves, what do we typically think of? There it is, weight loss. Yes. It, it doesn't matter who you are. I, I, uh, I, we were fortunate uh, this past Wednesday, our assistant pastor from our church in Houston was here. He gave the message. Um, and, and incidentally, he wanted me to thank each and every one of you for being so kind to him. Uh, he had a great time. He loves Austin now. Uh, we showed him all the great places to go and, and, and all the great places to eat. And every time we sat down to eat, he would, he would just kind of grab his, his fat. <laughs> and he would say, I'm eating too much. Well, let's dig in. You know, he, he, he really had a great time eating uh, here at the uh, places that are well known in Austin. But, but as we think of these New Year's resolutions and things like that, I'd like for you to consider, first of all, the blessings that the Lord has given to you this year. Let us consider some of those. If you would, please turn to Psalm chapter 68 and look at verse 19. Psalm chapter 68 and verse 19. And the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. And right here we see, first of all, of a blessing that is given daily. You know, I think many times we go through our lives, we go through our years, and we kind of think of them in, in kind of a collective manner, uh, a manner, uh, a general manner, if you will, where we say, you know what, this has been a good year. How many of you all had a good year? We'll just keep the hand raising going from Wednesday night. Did anybody have a good year this year? Okay. Well, 10% of us had good years. Okay. Let us look at the blessings that we had this year. We, we need to consider for a moment that we had daily blessings. I, I, many of you probably drive. It's not unusual to be out on the roads, especially in Austin. Um, if you make it home that night safely, you received a daily blessing. Okay? I think sometimes in this general view of blessings, we, we kind of look for those high points. We look for that blessing of maybe, I got a great job this year. We look for that blessing of, I got a raise this year. We, we don't necessarily take into account some of the extra special blessings, shall we say, that we get daily. And the Lord certainly blesses us in that manner. But also, He blesses us in a spiritual manner, with spiritual blessings. Go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. And here we see Paul stating in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We, we get daily blessings, but we also get spiritual blessings. Now, many times we think, well, maybe I didn't get as many spiritual blessings this year. And I would submit to you that there are ways to receive spiritual blessings. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But one way I would say that you could help yourself or assist yourself in receiving spiritual blessings is by going to church. By reading your Bible daily. That's one of those daily blessings we can get. But if you haven't received those spiritual blessings as you're doing sort of your, your yearly uh, assessment, maybe you want to look at what did I do? What did you do to get that spiritual blessings? It's, it's funny at my job, we, and I'm sure you all are the same way, I got into a conversation with a, a co-worker of mine 
we were talking about hard work and and every how many of you know the 80 20 rule anybody 80 20 20 percent really do the majority of the work and then 80 percent kind of follow those those 20 and we were talking about how children of today don't necessarily have the the hard work ethic and I would even submit I don't I probably don't have the hard work ethic of my father he's a workaholic um, and I would submit that my kids probably don't have the same hard work that I do you know you try to teach them but there can be a, a slippage there maybe a little bit <laughs> but in that hard work look back on your year for your daily and your spiritual blessings did you work for it? Or have we become this generation where we just kind of have that entitlement? We always, we've, there's been a lot of that going on in the world today where there's an entitlement factor amongst maybe the youth. Um, we expect things. And, and even as saved people, I think there's a healthy expectation where we should expect what Christ has for us. But that's a two-way street. So there are daily blessings and spiritual blessings, but there are also blessings that Christ gives us based upon our needs. Go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, just a few pages over. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. And this is a relatively well-known verse, but it's good to read. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we have daily blessings and spiritual blessings, but we have those blessings of our, that, that come to us in way of our needs. Many times in this entitlement atmosphere, we come to expect that we should get all of our needs met. And then we go out and it kind of... Uh, rolls into, well, we also now expect that our wants should be met. But this is not so in terms of the Bible. The Lord will come to us and He will grant us what He believes that we need according to His riches. But it's a two-way street. And keep that in mind as we go along in the lesson. It is a two-way street. Go over to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And let's look at verse 22 on through 31. Luke chapter 12, verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither the, for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. And key in on this verse, how much more are ye better than the fowls? In other words, Christ is saying, hey look, I'm going to take care of maybe what we perceive as the lesser things in this world, the fowls of the air. How much more will I take care of my people, my chosen? How much more? That word connotates a going above and beyond. And I remember in this hard work ethic that dad would always come in, and I think it was typically restrooms that I was uh, assigned to clean, whether at the church or at home. And I would clean, I, I hate that by the way, I can't stand it. My middle child, Krista, loves cleaning restrooms. She may have a calling, she loves it. I personally don't like it, and Lorraine and my wife doesn't like it either. But one thing that my father would always say is, hey, do a good job. Go above and beyond. And I did learn that lesson in other avenues, just not bathroom cleaning. But I, I now teach my girls that too. Hey, go above and beyond. Because what happens if you don't do a good job? Let's say you spent 30 minutes doing an average job. What happens? You have to go back, right? Well, the same thing we will see in, in this notion of, of our blessings that we receive throughout our life. Hey, sometimes we have to do much more as well. There's sort of an, a Christian 
ethical reciprocity there that takes place. If, if Christ, and hopefully you guys can hear me, if Christ is going to do much more for you, shouldn't we also do the same? That's an important notion to, t- to keep in mind. If Christ is going to do more for you, shouldn't we also give our best? Shouldn't we also put in the hard work in our Christianity, in our Christian walk? And that leads me to Psalm chapter 116, verse 12. Take a look at Psalm chapter 16, and verse 12. You know, many times we have this entitlement, as we've said, But now that we know that Christ is going to do much more for us, what is our part? If you take a look back on your your year or your life, and you're not receiving those daily blessings, you're not receiving those spiritual blessings, you're not getting your needs met, and it's a two-way street, maybe the problem is us. Many times we'll complain, we'll we'll have problems in life, but many times... We tend to put these problems are caused by us. Because maybe we're not putting forth that extra effort. Maybe we're not doing much more. Maybe we're not giving more to Christ. We're not willing to work for it. We have an entitlement sense there. But look at Psalm chapter 116 and verse 12. And I tell you what. I'm, I'm real big on getting people involved. Would somebody stand and read that really loud so everybody can hear it? Psalm chapter 116, verse 12. It can be anybody. All right. Do you see that ethical reciprocity there? If Christ gives much more to us. I mean, he, He's giving you something already. I mean, the, the very first thing is He died on the cross for our sin. So we have that opportunity to get saved and go to heaven. I mean, that's, that's a huge blessing, would you agree? That is enormous. I mean, if we don't get anything on this earth, we have the worst life ever, so to speak, but we get to go to heaven for the rest of our, our days, for eternity, that is an enormous blessing. And I think that's one where even that alone, we should have to give something to Christ. So look at Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord? See, there's there's something that we need to do as well. And it should be a one. No one can make you do something for Christ. But, if you haven't received some of those blessings this year, spiritual, daily, those needful blessings, maybe this is a verse we should look at. What shall I render unto the Lord? And and look at the last half of that verse there. It says, for all of his benefits toward me. See, there's a give and a take there. The Lord gives us something. We should, in a sense, want to give back. And think of Christmas. Have you ever received something and then not given something back to somebody? Have you all ever had that? Have you ever had the worst fear where someone comes up to you and maybe you don't even talk to them that much, and all of a sudden they give you a gift for Christmas, and you're, you're, you're like, oh man, thank you. What's your first thought? Or what should our first thought be? Our first thought should be, where's the nearest Walgreens, and where can I get the, the biggest gift card as quick as I can, right? You're, uh, <laughs> It should be like that. I mean, at least we should, we should think, man, I, I should give something back. But in this entitlement atmosphere that, that I'm fearful we're getting into, in, in, not only outside of church, but even in Christianity, we are just kind of taking. And that's, a, that's kind of a bad way to be as Christians. When Christ has given us everything, when Christ has put forth the ability to receive blessings, What shall I render unto Christ? And I submit to you as we as you think about this in your life here today and maybe in the next couple of days. I don't want you to go crazy. Don't think, man, I need to I need to do this and this and this and this for my for for Jesus. 
Let's not go crazy, okay? Let's just pick one thing, okay? Now, there are basics that we do for Christ. You guys are here this morning. How many of you would raise your hand and say, this is probably a basic Christian thing to do? I, I, I'll raise my hand. This Going to church is pretty basic, right? I mean, it's not... I grant you, sometimes it is hard to get up and, and go to church, you know? But I think that's a basic requirement for Christians to go to church. And yeah, I'm one that believes we should go to church if the doors are open. That's part of that daily blessing. It's super hard to get blessings on a Wednesday if you're not going to church on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. But I think those are basics. Go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. They say unto him, Caesars. Then saith he unto them, or let, actually, let's go to verse. Uh, let's go to verse eighteen. But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesars. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesars the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Rent under the things that are God's back to God. Now, we know that God owns everything, right? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything. He created everything, therefore He owns it. We're just giving back. But, not just your, your tithe or your money, right? How, how many of you would rather tithe or give your money, you don't have to raise your hand with this, but how many would rather give your money for tithe than to have to work? I'll be honest, I would. I'll be honest, I'd rather pay somebody to clean my house than clean my house, than work. And, and Christianity can kind of be the same way, where, well, I'll give my tithe, and then I'm good. I, I don't really need to do anything. But that's not what the Bible says. We need to... What can I render unto God? And God says, render under those things which are God's back to God. We need to have that Christian reciprocity. We need to do something. We have to. Isaac Watts uh, wrote a song as well as Charles Wesley on this rendering to God. And, and Charles Wesley's song says, What shall I render to my God for all his mercy store? I'll take the gifts he hath bestowed and humbly ask for more. The sacred cup of saving grace I will with thanks receive, and all his promises embrace, and to his glory live. My vows I will to his great name, before his people pay, and all I have and all I am upon his altar lay. All I have and all I am upon his altar lay. That's that reciprocity. If we want those blessings in our lives, we have to work. We have to give. We have to do something. Those blessings won't come if we just show up every Easter and Christmas. It's got to be a daily walk. Look at verse, or uh, go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. And this is a fairly well known. And most people think, well, why do I need to go to church? It can be boring. The pastor might have a, a voice, he may not. <laughs> In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Okay, let's just be frank. We're supposed to go to church. It's a basic. Go to Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. This is a basic rendering to God that we can give to Him. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. This is another basic. We should be in our Bibles daily, guys. If, if we're not, those daily blessings aren't going to be there. It, it's, just a, it's just a fact. It's, it's the way it works. 
I've, I've seen it in my life. If, there are, if I go weeks without being in my Bible, I'm not a happy camper. When I'm in my Bible, I feel like my blessing is more in the realms of being happy. That's just, that's just me personally. That's what I experience. Other people it might be different. But these are basics that we should be doing. Go to Psalm chapter 56 and verse 12. Psalm chapter 56 verse 12. Another basic that we should be doing. Psalm chapter 56 and verse 12. And the Bible says, Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. What, what can you render to God? Sur go to church, search the scriptures daily, and then render praises unto him. These are basics. Now, what is one of the best places you can render praise to Christ? Church. When you're singing, you're rendering praises back to God. See, a lot of times we go to church and we think, well, what am I going to get out of church? When really, in a sense, church is meant to bring the people in and to worship Christ. Really, you should be thinking, what shall I render to Christ? Be in church and render praise unto Him. These are just basics. These are things that we should already be doing. Okay? Now, Here's where we get into the, the meat. Okay, we've got the basics. We know we're supposed to render something unto Christ. We have the basics down. If you're not doing those basics, boy, I highly implore you, do the basics. Do the basics. Uh, I'm a, a training coordinator at work. Uh, one of my uh, other duties is to be the training coordinator in, in addition to my other stuff. And... I train individuals uh, in dangerous situations to go knock on people's doors and, and take care of whatever might need to be taken care of. And if they show up at your doorstep, just open the door. Um, but, but in these dangerous types of situations, my biggest thing is to train people on the basics. Because the basics is, is what will get you killed, at least in my line of work. If you don't do the basics, it can have catastrophic effects. And my guys may not get to go home, see their family, and all of that stuff. And we always say, hey, I'm going home at the end of the day. That's our mantra. I'm going home at the end of the day. And to do that, we have to teach the basics. And we stick to those basics over and over and over till it's mundane. Now, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you might think going to church three times a week could be mundane. Now, it shouldn't be mundane, but we as humans tend to think, ah, oh, church again? How many of you have told somebody that you go to church three times a week? I have. And, and typically, the look I get, three times a week? Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Now, fortunately, I have, it's, and it's kind of weird, but I have... Uh, I have three guys in, my, in the group I work with that are saved, which is fairly unusual. So we tend to witness and talk to each other, and, and, and two of them go to church on Wednesday night as well. So it's, it's a little different in my, where I work. Um, it's not always like that, I know. but um, and, and some of them are, are in this team that we have where I train them. And what we do is we train the basics. And then with each new training day, I come to them and I say, hey, I want you to think of one thing today that you need help on. Think of one thing to improve yourself, to make it better. Now, what happens with that? You have the basics down, and you're doing what's correct. And even in Christianity, you're doing what's correct. Pick something for this next year this is your challenge. Pick something in this next year that you're not doing and add that. And make that a new basic for this coming year. And then next year, pick another thing that you haven't done and add that. Make that, put that in your basic repertoire, if you will. Okay? This is your challenge for this next year. Alright? 
So you should have the basics. If you don't have the basics, maybe your basic is only coming to church on Sunday morning. Well, think about adding to your basic foundation going to church on Sunday night. If you're going Sunday morning and Sunday night, think about adding to your basic repertoire of going on Wednesday night. Maybe you're doing all three of those. Think about adding to your basic of going to visitation. Maybe you're not reading your Bible. These are things. Take in your basic foundation and be honest with yourself. It takes honesty to do this. And I tell my guys at work, hey, and I'll take them off to the side and say, hey, you're really horrible today. <laughs> you need to get right because you just got your, your buddy killed or whatever. So be honest with yourself. What is your basic foundation? Once you do that, then you can pick something. If you need help on finding an addition or that, that, that something you need to add to your basic foundation, go to pastor. I'm sure he can offer a multitude of things. Bathrooms might need cleaning. <laughs> I know when I was young, I would gladly give that to somebody. But think about this basics. And this all goes together, guys. What can you render to Christ? Christ is giving you much more, we should too. Don't just do the basics. Now, go to Mark uh, chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And this, this is something that is on my heart for this coming year. Because I've been horrible with this. I'll just be flat out honest about it. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not a great witness as far as going up to people who I don't know and just saying, hey, you have a church? I, I'm not. It's, it, I'll be honest. I can get up here and speak in front of people all day long. I do that at work too. I don't have a problem with it. But going up individually to people and then saying, hey, do you have a good church to go to? For some reason, that's hard for me. So that, that's one of those things I'm trying to add to my basic foundation for this year. And, and one, of, uh, one, of my, uh, one of the guys that I look to that does this on a constant and a consistent basis was Pastor Caleb, who was here Wednesday night and preached. We, uh, we took him to the Salt Lick up in Round Rock. Has anybody eaten there? Yeah? We were walking out and a guy starts talking to us and Pastor Caleb says, hey, do you have a good church to go to? And the guy was like, no, you know, churches are all, you know, they're, they don't seem like churches anymore. And he said, oh, well, you'll love Trinity. Caleb doesn't even go to our church. And he was witnessing for Trinity. And I thought, I am such a moron because I didn't do that. And I, and I want to kind of get out of my comfort zone and do that. We were playing basketball this week, and two guys came and, and played with us, and Pastor Caleb looks at him and says, hey, what are y'all going to do after college? And they're like, well, we want to play basketball. And he said, well, do you have a good church to go to? There's Trinity Baptist Church. That's a basic for him, and I want that basic for me. And that, I think, is one of the better basics to have in our Christian walk. Going out and witnessing to people. And think about it, because I'm horrible with it. But how many of you will just Go up to a stranger, maybe you're at a restaurant or what have you. And you say, hey, do you have a good church to go to? Come to Trinity. This is where we're losing the war in all seriousness. Because other religions, and I'll just use Islam because that's the one I have to deal with sometimes. But they have no problem going up to people and asking them to their mosque. Not one bit. And they actively recruit, shall we say. Okay? Now, I'm not saying we should recruit people because people should want to come to church because they want to. You can't make anybody. But are we good witnesses? Do we go outside of our comfort zone? Go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And this is just one thing that you could add to your repertoire of basics. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Why didn't somebody stand and read that good and loud? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. 
Anyone? Good and loud. Thank you. I, I tell you, I, and I need this first because I have great confidence in some things, but in witnessing, I don't have the confidence. But this verse, as our brother just read, Christ will help you be that witness. He'll help you with that power. And I'm not talking magical power. But for me, personally, that power of just confidence of going up to somebody and saying, Hey, would you like to come to church? It's just a simple addition to that basic foundation that I need. And I, and I see it in most Baptist churches. We all need that. We all need to be better witnesses. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Thanks for flipping here today. Someone stand and read Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, please. Hey, how many times, and I, once again, this is, I guess this lesson was for me today because I need this, but I tend to hide my light. Now, when I'm with other Christians in my group, my light shines. But if I'm with a group of unbelievers, my light doesn't shine as well. And that's a problem for me. I need to be a better witness. I need to take what the Bible says that He'll be with me, He'll give me power. I need to let my light shine. I need to be a better witness. I need to go out and, and ask people to come to church. And I think most of us are like that in, in some respect. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look at verse 8. We're going to be done here shortly. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, that's a blessing, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel." Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hey, that's my problem right there. I don't want to think I'm ashamed because we all think we're better than that. Well, I'm not ashamed. I'm, I'm saved. But I think there's a little bit of that when it comes to witnessing. Hey, just get out there and witness. Add this. This is a great addition to your basic repertoire of your Christian foundation. Witnessing. Now go over to Exodus chapter 36. This is what we should aspire to. Exodus chapter 36, verse 4 through 7, and we'll be done. Exodus chapter 36. Verses 4 through 7. I'm talking about the tabernacle being built here. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. Verse 7, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. Can you imagine if, if your pastor came to you and had to say, Hey, you're witnessing too much. I need you to slow it down. We only have so much room, okay? Think about that for a second. You'd probably fall over, right? But that's kind of what's going on here. Hey, the people were so excited to do much more they were running to render back to God what was God. They did so much more, they had to tell Him to stop. Hey, we're all stubborn in some way. We all got a little bit of rebellious streak in it. Hey, make this your rebellious streak for this year. I'm going to make Pastor tell me to stop witnessing. Go out there, 
add to your foundation what Christ has given you. Render unto God that which is God's. Do your best this year. Look at your foundations. Make an assessment. And when you make that assessment, find that one thing to go above and beyond. God's doing it for us. We should do it for Him. Thank you, son. <clears throat> and um, hopefully my voice will get better in church. Of course, we never know.